not one but two guests. And actually, I think I need to somehow. Okay, so I'm gonna. There we go. We got all three going. <laughs> all right, hey, Talk Universe cool. Facebook Live. We are back with uh, and now uh, with Eric Fletcher. And uh, Ellen has been hanging around a little bit. We do something <laughs> called the Skype sandwich. If uh, if people are on the ball enough back to back, and uh, and I just decided to do this to try to make my brain explode by doing enough different things <laughs> at the same time, like this <laughs> uh, digital equivalent. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ellen, any any final words of advice to Eric here as as you're all on Facebook Live and this is oh. this is all new ground, but any fine I know you did the private word of advice when I was out doing right. an unspecified activity that I will not mention what that may have been, had to step away for a moment. Uh any public words of affirmation, <laughs> warning, or advice since we're all on Facebook Live right now. Well, I already told Eric not to let it you bully him. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that, that won't stop. Yeah. Oh, I love no, it. just, you know what? Just have fun with it. And, yeah, you know, just share all your good stuff because I know you've got lots of good stuff, Eric. Well, I can tell by the smile on your face that you had fun with it. So it's, uh, it's a good act to follow. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. All um, right. Well, cool. Ellen, if you'll kindly just kind of drop off line. And I actually, will. what I'm going to do is whenever we do a kind of a three-way phone call on Skype, that that is kind of asking for trouble. So, Eric, I'm actually going to call you right back. We are okay. on Facebook Live. It's okay. No panic. No need to worry. No need to panic. And uh, Eric will be right back with us. And, Ellen, you're welcome to, to stay online and, and keep watching this. So, Eric, I'm going to call you right back, sir. Okay. All right, Facebook Live, back to the two of us, just the two of us again. And I got to move a couple of windows around to hit the right button. And here is Eric, and hopefully you'll bring her right back. I've heard there are sunspots in a full moon, and that might be impacting Skype. Oh, we don't want that. There we go. Yep, we are here. Welcome back. We're still Facebook live, and I don't see your video yet, though, so you might want to toggle that. Oh, really? Yep, okay. don't see that yet, and if we need to, we'll just kind of jump off and jump right back on. You had called, I, I had seen an a invite from you, which was the three-way call, which is kind of the polluted, it's not polluted, but it's like tech, you know, at-risk call. So why don't I do this, Eric? Yeah. I'll, I'll give you a call right back, and hopefully you can, uh, the video thing kicks in. Perfect. All right, right back at you. All right, and this is the way it works. Going to move the window out of the way that you guys can't see. Going to video Skype Eric again, and we'll do it again if we need to. No problems. No need to get upset. No need to panic. No need to uh, worry. No no hand-wringing necessary at all. All right, well, I am kind of wondering what's going on here, though. This is very interesting. Very interesting. I think I'll let Eric call me this next time, maybe. Huh. Well, and we're not going to... We're not going to call with double again. We're going to try it again. I'm texting him. We'll try you again, Eric. Okay. Okay. Oh, here he is. Oh, that's a call from Eric. All right. <laughs> and we're back. Did we get Eric. It? Yeah, we're right. back. We did it. And, okay. uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're pretty much good to go. Okay. Now that was fun. All right. I'm only, mar- I'm only marginally, uh, proficient at Skype. Yeah. So. Well, uh, Skype is only marginally proficient at what it's supposed to do outside <laughs> of the, uh, the audio quality is great. But the, uh, the, the connecting and the finding and the friending instead of my 18 other, uh, avatars on Skype that they won't let me like delete. That's not so cool. So anyway, I'm going to practice your, uh, your bio here. So it's the missing metric exploring how we measure vision. A former, a former broadcaster and award winning ad guy. Eric Fletcher is a fractional interim on-demand CMO and marketing consultant, keynote speaker, blogger, and board member for thought leadership, educational, and nonprofit organizations. 
and it is ericfletcher.com. Uh, I need to increase the font sizes here because I'm a little, a little challenged there. All right, very good. And I am, uh, yeah, I'm pretty much uh, ready to rock cool. on this. I spoke with um, my interview, and I'm blanking out just because I'm talking to 15 people today, but I had reached out to you, and I'm so excited to hear your side of this experience. So this is this is just wonderful. It's one of the reasons I started the uh, the alumni uh, Facebook group is make it easier not just for me to stay in touch with you, but but for you to meet these other amazing people uh, and uh, cool. and 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 just share one another's stories and perspectives. So it's all cool. Um, all right. So any questions for me, Eric? Before I hit the the actual recorder recorder here. I think I'm good. All right. Well, awesome. And thank you for being extra flexible. I'm not usually doing all this Facebook living and, Dude, and everything no else. No sweat. Man. All right. Uh, actually, let's do this real quick. If you can give me a five count, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. We're sounding pretty good. And we are back in three, two. We are live with Eric Fletcher. Eric, are you ready to talk? I am ready, Nathan. A former broadcaster and award-winning ad guy, Eric Fletcher is a fractional interim on-demand CMO and marketing consultant, keynote speaker, blogger, and board member for thought leadership, educational, and nonprofit organizations. Eric Fletcher, welcome to the talk. Thanks. I really uh, appreciate the invitation and I'm looking forward to it. Well, so am I, because your talk is all about the missing metric, exploring how we measure vision. And I love this. There, this is like, this is brilliant because it's it's like the movie Inception. There's a talk within a talk within a talk within a story. Your story, as powerful as it is, is simply an illustration of your message of helping people change the metrics by which we measure what is good, what is bad, what is impressive, what's normal, what's the status quo. Well, I love it. Um, I could go on and on and on, but I'm going to ask you, take us, Eric, behind the talk. Well, Nathan, you nailed it. Uh, the, the, I think of the, the talk as having uh, two parts. First, uh, kind of a cautionary tale, the downside to uh, us using, re relying so heavily, sometimes solely, on tools and measurement devices to help shape the way we view a person, whether we're talking about ourselves or a family member, our kids, people that we know and love, uh, even our communities. Um, we measure everything, right? And, and I mentioned in the talk, it starts early with uh, that newborn infant where we measure the length and the, and the weight and then check in at those critical benchmarks to be sure that physical developments taking place along along the way. But it extends through, throughout life. I mean, we, t we measure um, what, what, what constitutes a win? What constitutes a loss? We talk about, we measure possibility, uh, uh, aptitude, um, uh, possibility. And, and plenty of the me measures, measures are, I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm an ad guy, I believe in, in measuring things. But what happens if the tools that we're using or the measurements that we're, that we derive from those tools, uh, don't tell the whole story? If they're incomplete, um, it, it causes, and, and so the talk is really about uh, the unintended consequences. What happens when we allow those external measurements to define the way we think about ourselves, our kids, our friends, our neighborhood, uh, whatever the case may be. And, and as you mentioned, that, that's really the point of the talk. I, I do use a personal uh, story to to help weave it together, and and that's the story. Uh, I uh, early in my life measure by all measures, and still by all measures, um, am <clears throat> labeled, categorized as legally blind. And and again, uh, the the this this isn't really so much about me, hopefully, but it's about how depending on measures tend to. Uh, allow us to label, to put people in a box, and define the way we view view people, as well as the way we view ourselves. 
Eric, so that's behind the talk. Yeah, that's, that is behind the talk. And, and, and just to kind of bring quickly up to speed and, uh, check, check me to make sure that I understand correctly. Your parents, so you, you received that, that label or diagnosis early in life and your parents had to go to specialist after specialist after specialist. It wasn't because they were in denial about your condition. It was because they had a different vision. They had a different vision for you, for your life. And they found someone who had a, was willing to be or already was outside the box. And they were able to um, and, and this is where I get a little fuzzy. Um, it's important just because you're you're the talk, and, and and you've made it something so much greater. They were able to to diagnose or or find that it's not your eyes; it's another part. And when you go somewhere, if I'm not mistaken, where you have already been, you are as if you are fully sighted, if I remember from your talk correctly. However, I don't understand how that works. So I'm, I'm trying to catch everybody up. I'm going to turn it over to you because I'm obviously very, uh, uh, a, a, a little thin on the details. And I'm also really curious on, on how this actually works. Well, I, I really appreciate the, the, I mean, you got a lot of it spot <laughs> on the, the, um, so, my my particular i mean the, the only way we measure vision is still the same is the way it's been measured uh, for for uh, decades and it's with the typical eye chart or now we use eye machines but it's can you define anything in in my whole life i can define the big e on the on that wall chart that that, that we used to see as kids um my parents I, so i was born uh, cross-eyed, which has nothing to do with this, with, uh, my visual impairment, but, uh, it happened to be an eye malady and, and I had surgery as a child to uncross the eyes. So my parents knew that there was a visual impairment of some type, mm -hmm. but they really didn't think much about it. And they never treated me like anything was wrong. And, um, I was I was I was probably school age five or six or seven by the time I I went to a doctor and the diagnosis became uh, started coming in and so the the correction that I would make to your characterization Nathan I I don't see nor I'm not fully sighted the 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 point of the way we measure vision, there's only one tool to measure it. Mm -hmm. It measures, can I define, can I read letters from a certain distance away? And that's, I, I would, I would love to be able to do that. <laughs> but, but, um, we, the brain is an amazing tool, as I know you know, because I've listened to enough of your talks. You, the, the brain is an amazing tool and we start to compensate if we, let the brain do the work that it's designed to do. And if we'll exercise it, and if we, well, and thank God, my parents, they, they didn't A, view me as blind. And so B, they didn't, never treated me as blind. And quickly, I've got to say, of course, this isn't about being blind or not. This, this is, this is about the danger and measurement. And so because they treated me, uh, as if nothing was wrong, um, I was allowed to behave as if nothing was wrong. And, and I, I can see fine. People say, well, how do you see? What do you see? And it's impossible for me to, 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 to describe because uh, I don't see the same way you do. Right. Mm -hmm. But. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really asking you to somehow be able to describe something that's, <laughs> that's indescribable both for you and for myself. I'm, I'm trying to find that too. <laughs> yeah. It, it is, um, so. I, I, the easiest way for me to describe it is I don't see most of the detail that you probably see. Um, I see things in terms of shape, in terms of motion. Uh, I, I, uh, I can tell if I know you, if we met and I got to know you and we met several times, I would recognize you from a few feet away, not because I could define the characteristics of your face, but I would notice the way you move, the way you walk, the way you hold your, and, and that's just the way I see. And it's the way I always have seen it. And again, it's it, one of the tough parts of the talk is, is talking this much about me. Um, because I say in the talk, I said on the stage, I never ever viewed myself as blind. 
that just didn't even register with me when the diagnosis would be spoken out loud. Um, and, and it's not because of anything I did. Again, thank God I had parents that just um, thought the diagnosis, there was just something else there. There was a missing metric in their view. And so uh, they uh, challenged me to, um, I mean, I, I played uh, basketball and baseball and, and football, and I wasn't any good at any of them. Uh, and the degree to which being, needing to be able to see was a, a critical factor. I, I really wasn't any good. But I had all those experiences. Mm. Um, I, I've got to quickly add, and then I'll, 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 I'll shut up and let's talk about something <laughs> besides me. Um, the, the, there are plenty of people who uh, start out in life, and the older I get, there many of my peers are dealing with the loss of visual capacity, macular degeneration, and that kind of thing. And in many respects, some of that approximates the way I see. Those people have a much, much, much more challenging road than I ever had because I this is the way I've always seen. So uh, I, I, um, it, it really is less about me if the message comes through and more about we just need to be careful. Uh, 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 a, um, I'm a walking, talking example that a certain definition, a certain box, a certain label uh, probably wasn't accurate. Yeah, that, if that makes sense. Oh, it certainly does. And, uh, and this is really, this is about rejecting the status quo. This is about staying out of denial while, uh, being aware of the, if there is, uh, a one gold standard or only one standard to measure something. And that being, it's almost like the world is flat. Well, no, the world's round. Well, uh, prove it. Well, give me a ship and I'll, I'll sail yeah. around the, the world. It's, it's like the world is flat kind of thing almost coming into this. And I'm, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but when there's only that one kind of measurement and we do know about the human brain, we do know about other, you know, met, there, there's almost like almost a metaphysical thing where you can, uh, and, and this is my words, not yours. You didn't say this, but it's almost like you can sense people's energy or whatever, whatever it would be. Um, or there's some kind of mechanism that is wonderful and very special that would allow you to distinguish me if we had met, which, which we haven't, but, um, out, out from maybe a, a crowd or, or people. Uh, around and again, I'm putting words in your mouth, but uh, yeah. I, I think this is really interesting. I'm going to let you take those words out of my mouth and <laughs> fix this. <laughs> well, so I, I, you, but we, the point you're making the point well. The specifics are less critical in, in my view. I, you know, I, I, the, the older I get, age starts to do to my eyes mm -hmm. the same thing it does to everybody's eyes, and I'm, I'm, I don't see as well as I used to if that's uh but the oddity there and I know I don't see as well as I used to the oddity is if I go to the eye doctor tomorrow and I'm given the test I'm going to test exactly the way I've always tested since I was five years old <laughs> uh, there's not going to be any different and so uh, whether you're talking about a a, a a personality test and you know those are they're rampant in the workplace and they're they're good and they're valuable and I mean they're they're uh, helpful but or whether you're talking about um, uh, testing kids for um, uh, where their inclinations are, where their capabilities might be for potential. Um, I'm just really slow to assume that anything we create to physically test someone uh, gives us all the data. So um, it, it, uh, it, 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 and that, that's just, it's a, it's a healthy way to view, I believe that's just a healthy way to view uh, from the way I view my kids to the, the uh, way I uh, think about uh, people I work with to, to the way I think about a, a little larger global view. We've been enjoying this talk with uh, uh, interview with Eric Fletcher. His talk is called The Missing Metric exploring how we measure vision. And in a moment, we're going to be right back with the Blitz Round. 
And we're back. It's time for the Blitz Round with Eric Fletcher. I'm about to ask Eric a couple of questions, either or questions related to the preparation and performance of his recent branded talk. Are you ready, Eric? I'm ready. Are you a uh, memorizer, an improviser, or a blender? I am almost always an improviser, but for the talk, I was a memorizer. How'd that work for you? Uh, It was uncomfortable, uh, but it was the right thing to do. Well, it came through loud and clear. So sometimes that can be, uh, sometimes there can be pitfalls with that. But in in, in your case, uh, definitely we got the message. So uh, uh, that being said, you walk out on stage. Did you have nerves or were you in the zone or neither or both? I had nerves. Uh, again, memorizing was uncomfortable. As I was walking up, I said, how the heck am I, how do I start? <laughs> you know, those moments. So I had, I had plenty of nerves, but they were gone quickly. Yeah, what was the, the, and there there are several answers to this, what would you say is the biggest challenge of your talk? Uh, well, um, wow. Uh, organizing it and getting it down, getting it concise. Because I'm, I, 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 as you can tell, I go all over the place. Yeah, well, and, and what was the, the time count for yours? Again, uh, my time count was nine minutes wow. and I had to, I had to cut out a couple of minutes and, and I, at the at TEDx San Antonio, they're very, they made it very clear. You, you go over your stealing time from the next person and you will be cut off. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, and, and to say what you said in that talk that, that went so deep. I mean, it was a talk within a talk in nine minutes, uh, all memorized, very well played, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. That's high praise. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what was the most unexpected, strange, or just plain weird thing that happened during or right before your talk? Ah, uh, wow. Can I go right after? <laughs> so right, right after my talk, my wife uh, attended, and there were, I think, 16 or 17 talks on this particular day. And she's not one to sit through one talk, let alone 16 or 17 uh, I got finished, went back and sat down beside her in the audience and she leaned over and said, uh, I am really glad this is good stuff. And then she wasn't talking about me. She was talking about the, uh, everything else she'd heard that day. So that was, uh, that was, that was fun and, and, and surprising. We've been enjoying the Blitz Round with Eric Fletcher, and his talk was called The Missing Metric, Exploring How We Measure Vision. And you can check out that talk by typing it into YouTube, or you can go to our show notes page at bethetalk.com. We will have a clickable link right there, as well as you can connect to Eric R. Fletcher at Eric R. as in Robert Fletcher dot com. And uh, we're going to be right back in just a moment with the final word of advice. And we're back with the final word of advice to Talk Universe from Eric Fletcher. So how about this, Nathan? Consider this, that no matter what you do when it comes to shaping your opinion or thinking about yourself or other people, all of the measures aside, one tool, one measure has the ability to fly in the face of what everything else says, and that is the vision that you have to think about what might be, to think about what's possible. Uh, nurture that. It's in all of us. Nurture it. Seize it. Tap into it every day. Eric Fletcher, thanks so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to share your wisdom today with Talk Universe. Thank you, Nathan. It's been a pleasure. And that's a wrap. Thank you so much, sir. Oh, thank you. That was uh, excellent. You're a great interviewer. Oh, what what do you fun. like about me? <laughs> well, <laughs> people uh, people say that. I say thank you very much. Let me know what what I did that was was decent because <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, so so first you make it a conversation, and that's that's fun. And you make you make. Uh, you make your guests feel comfortable. I think that's you, you probably are well aware of that. Everybody, people say that. I watched several. Yeah, people yeah, say so. that about me. I I can't imagine. I my my adjunct professor persona has been lost. I guess I <laughs> make people comfortable. <laughs> Wow. Well, it's that microphone that does it. Yeah, the, the microphone, the little little bit of podcasting theater here to make everybody yeah. feel good. Hey, Talk Universe, thanks so much. Facebook Live, we're going to go offline here. 
in uh, in a second. So uh, we're going to sign off, and then uh, our next guest is waiting in the wings. So uh, stay tuned, and we'll be right back in just a uh, couple of minutes.